good morning wonderful people welcome to my channel sorry for the interruption now we were speaking continuing on the topic of d1 d10 for your career for your jobs for your prospects for your talents and so on and so forth right okay so the important things to understand we will cover first as principles because unless you know these basic principles of vedic astrology on which they decide what talent you have got where you are going to go into a job etc they are pretty firm on this okay so let's look at that you have to look at d1 and also d10 although d10 dictates where how you will be in the professional area so what really dictates your propensities in your profession etc etc you know in the workplace d1 is who you are d10 is who you are with respect to work distinction very important to remember these points my dear people okay d1 is who you are as a human being when you are even alone by yourself without any work without any relationships you by yourself is d1 your natal chart your natal birth chart meanwhile d10 or the 10th divisional aspect which i gave a little introduction in this previous video of this playlist is about you how you behave in the workplace how your workplace talents are so these two slides i'm going to focus on hopefully to give you a clarity on why we should look at d1 also and why we should look at d10 also be careful with this so let's cover the aspects okay now there on the chart there i have highlighted those areas in d1 chart in your natal birth chart we should focus on in order to understand talents and abilities that's where i'm coming from always this entire video series is going to be about your talents and abilities even case studies we will do with respect to talents and abilities what you have as talents and abilities is totally different from what you will use with it or not it's your choice it's your free will if you don't move your ass and don't do anything about it nothing's going to happen no magic apples are going to fall out of some magical tree okay this is just as simple so in a d1 chart what houses to look for and why Okay, let's see this. What houses to look for? First is number one is the ascendant. This guy over here. We need to look at the ascendant and the ascendant nakshatra. Okay, both ascendant as in the sign will give you the sign energy, and nakshatra will give you color of your personality, your dominant personality drive in your natal birth chart. Ascendant nakshatra will give you who you are as a dominant personality. This is carries to all area of your life, irrespective if it is Navamsha, if it is Dashamsha, whatever Amsha it is, it will carry everywhere. The idea of Vedic astrology giving you divisional charts is like a zoom in view. That's it. Okay, never think that only D10 matters and D1 doesn't. Both matter because you are the same person there. Even if you go to work and D10 is playing out, you are still you. You don't really change. Your approach and attitude changes, perhaps. Your kind of job changes, perhaps. Where you will shine at and be job changes, perhaps. Okay, get this clear. So we are looking at your natal birth chart or the D1 chart here. D1 chart says ascendant with the nakshatra, the sign and the nakshatra gives your dominant personality drive. Who you are as it defines you as a human being because ascendant carries to every area of life, all the rest of the houses. Next thing to look for when it comes to career is house number three, which I have highlighted here. Right, this house number three over here, which gives what with respect to work. Again, we are talking with respect to career, jobs, and your talents with respect to work, your business maybe. Okay. Number three, house number three in the natal chart gives you what? Just to recap, it gives you skills, it gives you competitive spirit, it gives you self confidence, it gives you writing and communication. These are just recap points I have highlighted over there. Because these aspects, what we are talking of, we are focusing on career only. These are career series. Next thing to focus on is house number five. And when I am talking about all these houses, you got to see the house lords where they are placed, where exalted, debilitated, all the rest of it. Cusp of the ascendant, all the previous rules apply. Everything applies. We are just focusing on the areas which are dominantly going to dictate your ability to perform, your talents, how you will do it, what style you will do it, and why you want to do it that way. In a nutshell, 
Okay, so now house number five defines what? With regard to work, it defines creative intelligence. Your creative intelligence. Look at number five. House number five, among other things, with regard to work, it stands for your education, your basic education, your schooling, your basic college. Okay? If you're a college degree educated person, the basic education is house number five. And the lord of the house number five, where it is sitting, which nakshatra it is sitting, all of that also can be seen. So it is creative intelligence, it's your basic education, how well you are educated depends in this day and age upon what kind of work you will get, what kind of salary you will get, where you will fit, all those things, right? Your qualifications, your educational qualifications is also the fifth house. Next one we should be looking at is house number six. House number six has got a very um, well a mixed bag of meanings, among other things it's called Dushtana house. I don't know what's Dushtana about a daily routine. So we got to pick these things on an applicability basis. Okay. Sixth house is also the house of daily routines. So daily routines as in you go to work, you do some daily routines even at work, right? Even at your office, even at, if you're at your clinic or if you're a doctor or if you're a surgeon, any profession, accountant, doesn't matter which profession, you have a daily routine even there. So sixth house applies there as well. There's nothing bad or dushtana about it, okay? It's just a daily routine. Everybody needs a daily routine. What's a dushtana about it? Right? You've got to pick these things with a little bit of, sometimes a jar of salt, not a pinch of salt. Approach to daily work. Sixth house here will define your approach to your daily routines. Daily routines and daily tasks. It may be even simple brushing your teeth or in case of work, as we are talking about, it may be pertaining to your approach to how you handle your tasks, daily tasks, each one of us has as a professional. You know this. Then next one to look at will be house number 10. House number 10 here, the Artha house, the main Artha house, is the place where your presence in the world is most felt. House number 10 is also the midnight, midday sun, right? noon sun. Sun is shining all over the place. That is your soul shining in the world. So it is very visible of who you are. In essence, career just means that your fame, your success, your type of work, your boss, your place of work, everything is just your presence as a soul fully available to everybody around you. Home on the other side, the opposite side of it, house number four is your private space. Tenth house is the most public place. Fourth house is the most private space. They are opposite to one another, the heart and the mind. How you act with your mind in the external world, in your offices, it's just that your presence is very visible. You're a good guy, bad guy, you're, you're a bitchy girl, you're a very good worker or you're a very good girl working, you know, very hard. Any number of qualities that the world around you perceives, mind you, world around you perceives you a certain way, is dictated by the attributes of the 10th house, the nakshatra, the 10th house lord and so on. Okay? So it dictates the type of work, it dictates what kind of bosses you will have, it dictates what kind of relationship you will have relationship with your boss. Is your boss a prick or is your boss being just unnecessarily difficult? It will dictate everything like that. Okay, you can examine this. Again, going to the 10th house, Lord, 10th house sign, Lord placement, Lord's nakshatra, everything else. Okay, so it dictates everything else. Now let's see what the D10 chart will transform and what areas we need to look for over there. Now in the D10 chart I have highlighted now with the numbers that's easier than those silly arrows going around. Okay. So in the D10 chart of course ascendant and ascendant nakshatra also primarily. But in D10 what does it show? This is not your natal chart. This is your professional chart. In D10 chart, the ascendant with the nakshatra shows your innate professional talents and abilities. Your innate. Innate means something which is natural to you. You don't have to learn it. You don't have to go to a seminar. You don't have to read a self-help book or any such nonsense. Okay, This is innate to you. You are born with it. That's who you are professionally as a talent, as an ability. Again, what you do with the talent or don't do with the talent, it's entirely up to you. No chart is ever going to say anything. Number two, the second house. The second house, in when it comes to translate it to your workplace and your attitudes at workplace, translates to your personal value system, highly neglected. 
I tell you, I, very few astrologers channels I have seen even out there speak about this. Your personal value system is everything to you. Not everybody works for the same reason. Some people feel very emotional about it. They have an emotional connect with the job. Some people feel very detached with the job. You have seen this. Some people are saying work is my life and they are a workaholic. Your personal value system of what you think work means to you in your life personally is shown by the attributes of the second house in your D10 chart. The Lord of the house, where the Lord is placed, exalted, debilitated, whether it's near to cusp of ascendant, what's it nakshatra, all the rest of the games apply. It also talks about your speech at work. Second house is the house of speech. And why I mentioned superiors over there? Because second house typically is for elder siblings in the natal. Remember that? Second house in the D10 chart becomes about elders at work who are what? Your superiors, your immediate supervisor. May not be the CEO of the company, but you have an immediate supervisor, right? Your relationship, how you speak to your supervisor, how you associate with your supervisor dictated by the attributes of the second house. Later on, we'll do this with case studies, it'll be simpler. Number three, again, the house number three is important here. And in D10 chart, what does it become? It becomes about competition you will face. Even sixth house, but so is the third house. Competition faced. What kind of competition will you face in your workplace? Okay. What kind of skill sets have you cultivated or not? Some people never cultivate their skills. No matter what astrologer they consult. They are still the dumbass. They don't work hard to cultivate a skill set. Let it be mountaineering, let it be painting, let it be engineering, let it be medical science, let it be accountancy, let it be literature, let it be any damn field of human existence. You need to practice, you need to be, work your ass off to cultivate a particular skill. Yes, simple. Nobody has cultivated, become mastery of a skill set just by sitting and thinking about it. Or just by even reading books. You can read 20,000 books and go to self-help seminars. But unless you do something about it by yourself, you're not going to have a skill set. How your skill sets get cultivated is in house number three. Interaction with the peer group. Third house is a house of peers. Means let's say you are a engineer, junior engineer. All the junior engineers whom you are interacting with is your peer group. Not one subordinates, not one above, same level. That's the peer group. So third house characteristics, third house lord, placements, nakshatra and even the deities which we will see in the case studies how the deities also affect which we saw in the previous uh, video. Deities is important in D10 chart. So all that matters of the third house are important to pay attention to. Number four in D10 chart, the heart center. What does it mean when it comes to D10? When it comes to D10, it means satisfaction and your emotional aspect and approach to work. Like I said before, some people are very emotionally attached to their work. Work means everything to them. They take it personally if the boss scolds them about something. They say, this is very hurtful to me. The other person next to them, they say, why are you bothered? This is just a job. You're just paying the bills. Why are you taking it so emotionally? Right? But it means something to them. The fourth house matters wherever the lord is placed nakshatra ascendant uh, sorry ascendant and everything else the nakshatra of it the deity of it everything will dictate how this person handles emotionally from the heart center whatever work means to them emotionally everything means something to human beings we are human beings something it means emotionally to you how it means and what color it assumes it depends upon the lord of the fourth house and everything else so we need to look at the fourth house Fifth house, of course, it's creative intelligence, but now it is being applied at workplace. So your creative intelligence at work is the fifth house. Talents being used at work. You might have a lot of talent. I've seen so many engineers have a talent, being an engineer myself, right? I've seen so many engineers who have talents, but they never seem to use any at work. I'm like, dude, you have this talent. Why are you so looking clueless? Just use your talents. Application of talent is one thing, having talents is quite another. Again, it's the same kind of situation. Having education is one thing, using it is one thing. Another. Having talents is one thing, using it is quite another. It's just that simple. Having wealth is one thing, use it, the way you use it is something else. Anyway, so number six, house number six now, right? House number six is the ability to face challenges when it comes to D10. 
we are talking about the d10 sixth house here not d1 your ability and the courage you have to face your enemies enemies will be there okay just like in the third house the enemies will be there so how you face up to them do you have courage to face up to them or are you some weak ass always trying to go into one corner it will dictate that some people are timid because of this okay ability to face challenges ability to approach the enemies at work some people handle enemies as we have seen with jupiter qualities you know they try to give wisdom they try to give them knowledge don't do such and such a thing what have i done to you that kind of approach some people will take it emotionally some people will take it with mars approach i'm going to kick this guy's ass mars approach so ability to face challenges and enemies at work is dictated by the 6th house next we should be looking at the 10th house the kind of work the place of work and the kind of boss you will have because this dictates everything and boss also consequently will be whether you get promotion or not if you constantly keep pissing off your boss you are not going to get promotion you have to change companies it happens all the time it's not an uncommon thing these days so kind of boss whether you will get name fame recognition at workplace is the 10th house like i said 10th house is the afternoon noon time sun is over the sun in the middle of the sky it is your soul's most public presence that's all it is what you do in the world when you go outside as your work everybody sees who you are and your energy your karma your aura carries to everybody else this is why some people look at you and in, in spite of arriving newly at work some people immediately start hating you for no nothing you aren't even start going to your desk yet this is how karma plays out at workplace remember this number 11 social community and network engagement because 11th house is the house of social network networking long term dreams of career again that will also be the 11th house what do you aim out of a career do you have a goal of becoming a ceo of something or if you are an entrepreneur do you want to make money out of a restaurant business clinic whatever it is couple of million dollars what's your ambition that will be dictated whether it be fulfilled or not through the aspects of the 11th house 11th house lord its nakshatra its deity and so on and so forth okay so i want to leave you with these two to think about and this will be the basis of our further studies on career on job on business how well you do how well you do not and further case studies okay right i leave you with this much take care be safe be 